Welcome to the Let's Talk Data podcast series presented by SAP, where we explore game-changing technology and strategies with leading experts with the goal of maximizing the value of data across your organization. If you haven't done so already, please follow or subscribe to our podcast on your favorite channel to stay tuned in. Welcome to our Let's Talk Data podcast series. My name is John Liu, and I will be your host today. The business technology platform enriches the value of moving to SAP S4 HANA Cloud, and customers can now benefit from a new offering from SAP Build Process Automation to kickstart their cloud automation project. And you might wonder, what is SAP Build and what is SAP S4 HANA Cloud? Well, if this is your first time, that's great. So let's hear firsthand from the product experts. Today, I am joined by Angela Harvey from SAP Build Process Automation and Vivian Wang from SAP S4 HANA Public Cloud to share more details about this new exciting offer. So before we begin, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. Angela, can you first introduce yourself, please? Absolutely, John. So my name is Angela Harvey. I've been with SAP for oh, almost 17 years now, and I'm currently responsible for marketing and solution management for SAP Build Process Automation, which is a part of our SAP Build uh, suite of offerings for low-code, no-code solutions. And Vivian, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you, John. And hi, Angela. It's funny. Actually, it's all, also my 17th year. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hi, hi, everyone. So I'm Vivian. I'm from the SAP S4 HANA Cloud Solution Management. I'm leading the Line Business Experts team. So it's my great pleasure to be here with both of you. Thanks. Oh, John, thank I, I was just doing the math. It might be like your 17 month, 17th month here at SAP, I think. Oh so yeah, you're, you're a bit earlier on your journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. This is going to be good stuff. You guys have tons of knowledge. So Angela, for those who are unfamiliar with SAP Build and they don't know what it is, can you maybe give us a little quick overview of what uh, SAP Build is? Yeah, absolutely. So you might be familiar, you're probably familiar with some of the solutions in SAP Build, um, but we had an announcement at TechEd where we were bringing together all of our low-code, no-code offerings into a single portfolio um, with a common unified lobby, common experience. You can share artifacts between them just because we realized with these low-code, no-code tasks, there was a lot of benefit in doing it all together. So what the portfolio is comprised of is SAP Build Process Automation, which for those of you that have been around as long as Vivian and I, um, is actually a combination of what was known as workflow management and intelligent robotic process automation. So that's really about optimizing um, you know, your business processes and automating them. We also have SAP Build Workzone, um, which brings together uh, former solutions like Jam and Launchpad into beautiful business sites. So anyone can curate all of the information that they need, connect to SAP systems to pull in that information and non-SAP systems to create these beautiful business sites with SAP Build Work Zone. And then we have SAP Build Apps, which was the AppGyver acquisition. And that lets anyone create beautiful front-end and back-end applications with point-and-click ease. Um, honestly, my nine-year-old has actually built apps and build apps. Like if you can use PowerPoint, you can build an application. So um, a lot of fun to go in and play around with if you haven't had a chance. So that's kind of build in a nutshell, John. That's awesome. So it sounds like it really is like a unified portfolio and it really like allows anyone of all um, regardless of expertise level to really you know create like apps or um, business sites or even like um, automating systems. Yes. So exactly. awesome. Cool. And then Vivian, can you also share with us um, what does SAP S work on a cloud and you know how do you see this relates to or integrate with SAP build? Yeah glad to do so. So the SAP S on a cloud public edition is is our cloud ERP offering. So SaaS based, mm -hmm. and uh, it really supports our customers end to end mission critical business processes. So if you are performing in the service centric industries or product centric industries or many, many of the companies, they are actually engaging in both areas. And these are all the processes that SAP S400 Cloud supports. I think when we talk about the relevance about SAP build to S400 Cloud, 
S4 HANA Cloud really helps our customers in connecting their different departments together and streamlining the business operations to win more efficiency and maximize their profitability. If I just uh, remember what Angela introduced, the components within the SAP build uh, world or the different elements, I think um, talking about operational efficiency, for example, we still see there are many manual repetitive tasks ongoing, and this really eating up lots of time and patience of business user. Plus also um, when we talk about streamlining, then I think the workflow or um, the operational flow like a task will be sent forth and back and to uh, go around different departments. And I think this is also something that customers really looking forward to have more efficiency and uh, more productivity there. And uh, um, if we think about the build app and Angela, you said that it's actually no code and then code uh, um, based and then even even uh, young generations they can already they can already handle this manage this i think think about public cloud which is a SaaS solution comes out with many predefined and standardized processes and then leveraging this build app capabilities i think this really gives also our customers the opportunity and the capability to extend without investing too much in their IT uh, costs. So I, I think in, in our conversation going forward, John, we are going to uh, dive into more details, but mm -hmm. I think summarized thinking about streamlined business operations, wing efficiency, I'm fully convinced that the SAP build will bring a lot of benefits and this is super relevant for s Public Cloud. I totally agree, Vivian. And if I can just build on a point that you made too about, um, you know, not having to make as much investment in IT, I think that is one benefit, but also, and of course, we still need IT there to set up the system access to make sure everything's governed and safe because we don't want business users, you know, doing things in S4 they shouldn't be. But the other point that I know you and I've talked about before too is the power of build as well is it's the business users that are using the S4 system, whether it's a finance professional or others, they're the ones closest to the process and they really know what needs to happen. So you're also kind of removing the middle person. Um, if you want to say optimize a process and you're a finance manager, you're going to know what are sort of some of those bottlenecks. So bringing the power into the hands of the business experts. Um, and like you said, the younger generation is a lot more digital native. Um, it, it just makes things more streamlined and efficient. And yeah, it results in a better outcome, I believe. Absolutely. I mean, I, I didn't tell you that before I joined SAP, actually, I worked as an accountant. And, you know, business users, they are living day in and day out yeah. the operational processes. Mm -hmm. They really know where, where there is a potential to use this technology to really you know, improve their daily work. And um, so I um, fully ag agree with you now with SAP Build, we really give our business user the power to improve their their daily work. And I think that's that's really powerful. Of course, and they're like the closest to the business problem. So mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll have like Absolutely. a great oversight on, you know, um, yeah. on the issues and what they can improve on. Cool, awesome. So. You know, Angela, can can you speak on this uh, new offering for SAP Build Process Automation and SAP S4 HANA Cloud? Um, can you share what it is and um, what can customers get out of this new offering? Yeah, absolutely, John. So really to reduce the, the barrier of adoption for Build and get everyone using it or more people using it, it is now bundled in many of our RISE offerings. So kind of going forward, if you move to RISE with SAP for your pu public cloud for S4 offerings, then you have the ability to use these you know, embedded licenses for free to get started. So it's a great way to try out some of these tools and see if they're a fit for your organization. Um, of course, the RISE bundling also includes CPEA credits and everything within um, the build portfolio is available on CPA. So we've kind of given two great ways to get started um, if you are a RISE customer and wanting to try out build. The other thing I would uh, call out as well is on the process automation side of things, we've got literally hundreds of pre-built bots and workflows because 
we know finance processes and we're working closely with our customers. So we work with our customers to understand what are some of the most common things that they're wanting to automate. And, um, you know, members of Vivian's team work with members of, of our engineering team to build this pre-built content. So you can just easily get started automating your processes, like literally point and click. You can use the process automations as is or modify them to really suit yourself. So it's just a really low barrier way to start trying some of these low code, no code tools if they're new to you. And, and you know what, and Angela, so um, two years ago, I had to prepare a customer demo with a bot-based automation, and I, I really tried it out on my own. I connected my S4 demo system with the pre-built automation board for sales order automation, and I have to say it was not a very complicated task for me. And so I, I truly believe with this pre-built bot, it's a fast start for business users to start. In addition, um, the other elements you just mentioned embedded in the RISE bundle, then um, to start a journey, so to say, with the pre-built bots, and then um, you know figure out the more specific customer requirements and they use the build app and to build their own bot i think this is really a great journey for enterprises to go on the intelligent erp journey that's great to hear you had such early success with yeah. it vivian really I, I know i might out. that's awesome we've, we've got a customer testimonial right there <laughs> that's great awesome yeah so I know we kind of touched on it a few questions ago, but who, who exactly is this for and what kind of professionals or groups can really benefit from automation? And Could you maybe expand a little bit on the type of audience that this could be for? Yeah, I mean, I just follow what I just discussed previously. As a business user, I really feel the pain in dealing with repetitive manual tasks. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just boring and even more worse, I mean, the more manual steps I have to do in my daily work, the higher chance will be that I make mistake. So um, if if an organization can leverage modern technologies to to really help business user and to to ease up their daily work and uh, allow them to focus their or use their creativity in more, let's say, much more value added tasks. So for me, I. As a business user, I see very um, a lot of benefits for business users. Angela, what do you think? I, I completely agree with you, Vivian, although we always struggle a little bit when we're doing our, our messaging in that because there's also a lot of benefit for IT in this. I know sometimes people's natural reaction with low code is like, oh, it takes away, you know, developer jobs or pro IT jobs. But I don't think it's really about that. I think it's about freeing up IT departments to work on more meaningful tasks and really empowering their business users. Um, I mean, I'm sure IT isn't interested in changing, you know, the color of my work zone site for me if, if I decide I want it pink, <laughs> not blue, right? So by letting the end users really kind of customize their experience, but in a governed way, it also frees up IT to, you know, to deliver a higher level of performance to their business stakeholders, um, but then they can also focus on more mission critical tasks. Um, Vivian, you did mention earlier kind of this new digital native workforce that's, you know, entering the workforce now um, where they're just so good at using these low code, no code tools and they they are more have more of an appetite to try these things out. It's interesting because it's kind of coupled with a time where there's a real professional developer shortage. So uh, according to IDC, 15% of full-time developer roles can't actually be filled. Like these vacancies are just sitting open because of a shortage of talent. So you definitely don't want this high-valued talent working on tasks, you know, like connecting a workflow or um, you know, pulling in a UI card to work zone so someone can see their tasks. Those are the sort of things you want to put in the hands of a business user. So I absolutely agree. Who's who's usually initially interested in this is the business user. But what we find too is it's something that IT is quite friendly to as well because it you know saves them time and allows them to support their business users, but in a way that they're not. Um, you know, it's fully governed because it's on the BTP. They, you know, we can use the APIs from S4. We know they're connecting in a very secure, governed way. And you just mentioned the point like uh, we have observed uh, the really uh, highly demanded talent, talents are quite difficult to to <laughs> for for organizations to win them. I think with all this automation, with this all. Uh, um, 
modern technologies, I also feel it's quite encouraging and very motivating for employees and have fun in their work, in their job. I think overall it will be a super positive, how to say, a circle just yeah. to get the organization get benefits for long term. And definitely like even the collaboration between IT users and the business users, I imagine that would be a great, you know, uh, productive environment. Sure. I guess with this, the interaction with the business and IT will be much shorter and mm -hmm. uh, people will be able to see results much faster, I believe. Okay. So what are some common scenarios where people can use automation within their S4 system and what sorts of uh, problems does this solve? And it's funny, John, even Vivian and I, when we started working together on this project, one of the mm -hmm. questions we grappled with was, you know, there's already workflows in S4. Why do you need the workflows in process automation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were just kind of confused or, or concerned that customers might be confused or, or think, oh, can't S4 do this? Um, one of the ways I've heard it positioned, and, and Vivian would love you to chime in as well, is one of the great use cases for workflows and automations is kind of the pre-processing that needs to happen before it gets into S4. So yes, you know, SAP has been doing ERP for a little a while now, about 50 years, we understand the processes that need to happen, but every organization is unique. So there's going to be some business rules and pre-processing of things that need to happen before it's ready to get into S4. One scenario people commonly understand is, say, invoice processing. So you can get that in a lot of different formats from different vendors. Some people will send you an email. In some people, it will be in a document. In others, it will be um, maybe in an Excel template. So that's a really common scenario where we do have pre-built automations that you can install to work with S4 right out of the box. Um, in that case, we actually use embedded AI to extract relevant data like the vendor name, the date, all of that that needs to go into S4. It goes into a form. You can kick off the rules of who needs to approve it before the invoice can actually create a purchase requisition. Um, so all of that approval step and kind of processing of the data happens outside of S4. It has a human kind of check off, yes, I approve this, and then it would go into the S4 system. So I think that's a really easy to understand scenario of where, you know, the business, the decision makers might be different in your organization, or you might have a different format that you need to, to capture. And you can set up that workflow within process automation, get everything ready, and then, you know, use the, the SDKs and the connectors to S4 to just automatically trigger the requisition. Um, but Vivian would love your feedback on it as well. Yeah, I, I, I really like this example, especially I have been pretty deep in that uh, in that whole story. Like we really leverage bot plus also the AI power embedded and also the workflows to really streamline these whole processes. I also have another example for you, John. If you look and think about the manufacturing processes, we really have pre-built bot which will be able to you know automatically upload the de production demand and into the S4 system. And uh, um, we, we also have um, AI power embedded and to determine the, the best of demand and uh, um, to really optimize the inventory planning level. And uh, if in the material requirements planning processes that the system identify a problem, that there will be also workflow triggered to you know, send the task to the related user and raise their attention proactively, remind them to solve a problem, to really fasten the, the, the process. And, uh, um, you know, until the end, if the production process really runs through and uh, we still have uh, the process automation, which will allow the, you know, automatically conform the production the production orders. So um, if we think about everything connected together from line business to line business, these technologies, these stand behind, it's, they are the hidden heroes, but they really will be able to connect users together and across the processes from your sales, manufacturing, procurement to the finance. So this will be the the, the red thread, so to say, um, go across your organization and really drive your processes intelligence. 
that's another example just uh, um, mm -hmm. um, to my yeah. mind, comes to my mind from the manufacturing perspective. But Angela also mentioned we also have a lot of beautiful examples in the finance area. And it's 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 I think it's the connection. It's it's really that's the beauty of SAP Build that we have for each layer the technologies behind and we can really see the business benefits for uh, enterprise resource planning processes across the whole organization. Yeah, those are uh, those are two both great examples on how you know automation could be used in their and people's S4 systems. My final question for both of you is um, so for those who are not too familiar with automation, how can they get started? What are some options available to try out um, process automation for S4? I can try the pre pre built pre built bot already. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree, yeah. Vivian. I think trying out the pre built bots is the best way to get start started. Um, you know, Vivian, you mentioned you'd tried it yourself for a demo. I had a similar scenario. I came into the role right before Sapphire and was demoing a couple of weeks later, and I did exactly that. I used a pre built workflow in that case, and then I I modified it to tell my own story. So I think that's a great way to get started. Um, for a lot of customers, you may be licensed for this already if you have CPA credits um, or you have one of the new Rise bundles that includes SAP Build. Um, if not, we've also got the SAP um, BTP free tier, which all of the build products are a part of. So you can sign up on the free tier. It's actually available even for productive use. You can go ahead and get started. Um, and then like Vivian mentioned, try the pre-built content. Um, it's actually available right from within SAP build process automation. There's a, a place called S store. You can just search for S4, even though it's called store, it's all free. You can just, yeah, start using it. I, I was not aware about this free tier offering. It sounds quite interesting, especially if someone really wants to get quickly hands on and try it out. It's perfect. Yeah, no, it is a really great offering, Vivian, and I like that it's available for productive use as well. So there's no limitations. It's just community support if you're using the free tier. Um, but we don't limit you to just trial or dev purposes. You can actually use it in your implementation. Um, we also have as well a guided experience if you're not quite ready for the free tier. So if you don't go to sap.com slash build, um, you can find the guided experience there. And that's a great way to just start. It's actually a live tenant of, of build. Um, and we've got an invoicing scenario, the one I actually spoke about at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's got some cool software on top that tells you exactly what you're doing. So it's like, click here. Here's how you build the bot. <laughs> so it's kind of informative. So that's another way too, John, if people just want to kick the tires, but maybe don't need their own tenant yet would be the guided experience. And so I, you mentioned free tier. Um, so what, is there a difference between free tier and a free trial for this? Yes, exactly. So the uh, who, I didn't know there's going to be a quiz. Um, I believe the free trial is time bound. So it's like six months or something like that, whereas the free mm -hmm. tier is in perpetuity and it's just bound by capacity depending on the BTP service. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend going with the free tier over the trial. We tend to use the trial more for things like hackathons and that. So if you're a customer wanting to try it, I would recommend just starting with the BTP free tier. Um, it's available through the Discovery Center, or if you just search SAP BTP free tier, it should come up quite quickly in your results. And just really double confirm, customers can really use it for their productive purpose. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That's really good, yeah. Or for demos, I, I, I'm, I'm so happy I learned this today. Hey. <laughs> there we go. I learned the manufacturing scenario, so we all learned something new. Hopefully, the audience okay, did good. as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you know, before we sign off, um, is there anything that uh, you want to leave the audience with? I would just like to mention too, uh, sorry to jump in, Vivian. You, 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 um, know, you go for us, Angela. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm responsible for process automation, so we've spent more time talking about that today. But, you know, the build portfolio overall is really fantastic, and we've seen, seen some great examples with S4 already. Um, one is around build apps for data collection. So having, you know, being able to do data collection, for example, on a mobile device really easily and then have that feed directly into S4 is a great scenario for build apps. For build work zone, it gives you these beautiful curated portals 
Um, one of the neat use cases I actually heard about on that one was a, a vendor supplier portal where you could expose some S4 data to your suppliers if it was relevant for them, but do so in a curated fashion. So again, they can kind of self-serve, have access to the information that they need, um, but you can do it in a, a read-only type of operation. So lots of great opportunities across the build portfolio with, with S4 HANA. I can just back up what you just have said, Angela. So I think customers that have chosen as well on the cloud public edition, they they are expecting, you know, a ready to run cloud ERP that really delivers the industry best practices and allow them also to uh, continuously innovate. And uh, um, they, they are expecting the most value to, to their business and uh, the addition to have the SAP built process and to have the SAP built on, on top or, you know, empower this whole ERP processes really gives, this really gives our customers the ability to, um, to take those standard business processes to the next level of, of automation and process optimization. Fantastic. Angela, Vivian, thank you very much for your time and joining this episode of Let's Talk Data podcast. And, you know, for those who are interested uh, in, in more information, uh, please check out the links in the description. We have a click through demo that goes over an invoice processing example, um, which is a common S4 scenario and an ebook on the discussed uh, pre-built content, uh, a blog post on how you can get started and much more. Um, if you've enjoyed this podcast, then please check out the rest of Let's Talk Data series. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. Check out the show notes for additional links to information. And please subscribe or follow to join us on the next episode of Let's Talk Data presented by SAP.